Hello folks. We all feel this, right? Tough in mocks, but easy afterwards. And so um, I am able to attempt only this many, only this many I answer correctly. But afterwards, I am able to do it really, really, really quickly. The questions look uh, super juicy. How do I bridge this gap? So, first of all, this gap is not huge. And so uh, this is very important to know that um, we, we often, very often overestimate how much we can do afterwards. And the two reasons for it, one, we are naturally optimistic, otherwise we are not going to prepare for an exam. Two, there is a degree of familiarity with the question. By the time you see it after mock, you've already seen it once. Your brain has processed it and either let it go or done something incorrect. And so, we, this number, after mock I could do 20 of them, after mock I could do 18 of them, or after mock I could do 10 of them, it is only 6. Or I attempted 11, got only 7 right, but my hit rate was better, my accuracy was better. Great part of this is uh, imagined. And so, it sometimes seems very harsh to say this, but hey, sometimes we do need to listen to harsh things. Luckily enough, I'm not right next to you, you're not going to be offended or angry with me. Uh, or at least you can't do anything about it. Uh, this is true. Very often, we wildly overestimate this. And so, having said that, so that I, can, I'm not, I can't say, look, that's it, I've overestimated this, end of story. If there is indeed a gap, and then how do we, how do we bridge that gap? And so, um, the obvious reason is uh, exam anxiety, stress, that setting, time pressure, all of that. Time pressure plays a role. Right? So, drilling deeper, why does this time pressure play a role? Why does the exam anxiety part play a role? A couple of things. One is the question selection conundrum or the question selection challenge reigns supreme when you're doing a mock. And so, every time you're solving something, especially with LRDI, you're attempting a puzzle or attempting a question in quant, a part of your brain is still furring away and saying, should I have already actually attempted this question? Have I made the right choice? Is there something else that is easier? A part of your brain is clouded with that decision making. And very, very important to kind of acknowledge that. And so, how do we combat it? We switch off. We don't always be in this question selection decision mode. There is a question selection mode and a question solving mode. And so you jump in and you solve. Every time, every second, every microsecond that you're solving, if you're continuously second guessing whether you should have indeed selected that right question or that question, this, then you're, you're, you're minimizing the part of your brain available to handle this. You have to dial out of the exam paper question selection mode and dial in to question solving mode. And then you say, hey, this doesn't work, dump it, go to the next. And so it takes practice. But that is one very, very big reason. A part of your brain is occupied still with the idea of have I selected the right question? And you have to combat that very consciously. You make a selection, you attack it. You attack it for a minute if it's quant. If it falls in place, it falls in place. You reach the computation solve, you solve it. Then you take the decision all over again for the next question. Reset and reshoot, restart. And so you can't be always taking the decision of have I selected the right question all the time. You cannot say 15% of my brain is perennially occupied for the entire 40 minutes doing this question selection decision making. Then you are cooked. You have to dial out and dial in out of that mode. Very important. Lots of people struggle to do this. So drilling deeper into why this happened, that is one thing. And second thing is the time pressure part. And it is linked to this. When you look at the timer and it, it, it dials down. You have to select, you have to choose. You immediately do the math. I need to be doing four more questions in, in nine more minutes. To achieve my target that seems really difficult i need to find the right four questions so there's a question paper level discussion that happened which is important which is crucial which is inevitable and so but you have to switch out of that and then come back to it. the worry you have to figure out ways of saying look i worried about the time now i'll worry about just this question you cannot i repeat you cannot afford to be the person who reads the question and a part of your brain is occupied with something else you have to train you have to practice that is why that is why all these mocks are for. That is what all these marks are, mocks are for. Keep that in mind. This happens very much in the last three, four minutes. Three minutes to go, you look at the timer. Three minutes to go, you scroll up and down. You want to select the right question. You look at one question and say, this may take too long. I may not even get it right. You look at another. Two minutes to go. Uh, two minutes to go, even this is too tough for two minutes. Let me go back. Oh, again, it's a three minute question. This, this I left when I had three minutes to go. How am I going to solve when I have 90 seconds to go? I leave this. And then finally, last 40 seconds, you're just waiting for the timer to end. You don't even do, do it meaningfully by having a good smile, taking a deep breath and being ready for the next section. No, no. You're leaving it unhappy and, and, and distressed or just willing it to actually go to zero because you have messed up the time. So that happens. So 
on and that you need to have a clear mechanism of what to go back to and not kind of flit around or jump around from one place to another too much and so be uh, the, the time pressure context the stress context are all real you know, we, we cannot wish them away we need to figure out mechanisms in our head to bypass them to say hey okay this much time pressure i've got now i'll attack the questions doesn't fall in place tick at least i gave it my give it my all and the final part uh, there is you have to figure out ways of making adrenaline work for you and anxiety get tamped down it's a very pressure handling contextual thing you've got to say look if the, the way of setting the scene it is not the most important exam in my life you tell yourself that is not make or break this two hours next two hours is not going to determine my my life you tell yourself all that and it is true you know you have to just tell yourself it is not and so you have to uh, de emphasize the importance of the result and percentile and mark and score uh, and and have an element of hey good question let me have some fun with it and it is it is important to feed the curiosity feed that childlike enthusiasm in yourself to keep it intact till the end and when you do that have adrenaline running with you and so in an exam context technically speaking you have one bazooka that works here that doesn't work here just adrenaline rush people do crazy things in that context that they can't do outside of it i i simply cannot bring myself to solve uh when i'm reviewing questions at the speed in which i'll do mocks and when i'm taking actual cat it is another 5% higher better i'm doing it only once i'm, I'm yeah, in it i'm in the zone and so you have to figure out ways for adrenaline to work for you uh, and for that you your your mentally can't be you can't cloud yourself with all kinds of outcome related thinking and all of this gyan of psycho babble and pressure handling is a little bit of uh, it is easy to say and then tough to implement and I, whenever i have to implement i struggle i struggle rather clearly last time around i took a live mock i spent 18 minutes on an lrdi set did not crack it and so every mistake that i'm trying to tell you guys is because i've done them and i'm trying to not do them at least that frequently hopefully you'll also figure out ways of not doing that and so this long and short of it this gap is not as big it's partly imagined and so we are not that good either we are not this bad but we are not this good either and so uh, you have to figure out ways of bridging the gap in terms of handling time in terms of taking decisions in terms of having 100% of your brain working on solving the question methodically then you have to figure out ways of saying hey how can this be better how can i have a sudden rush in the zone energized adrenaline rush feeding into this performance uh, that's important fire away take plenty of mocks hopefully a few of these things will fall in place best wishes hello folks we have a geometry workshop happening on october 2nd 4th and 5th that's right you heard me right it's over 3 days theory discussion and one intense day of 9 hours 8 hours of uh, geometry all the details are available in the description below do check them out best wishes